it's cultural, it's spiritual, it's physical, and it's oftentimes social. Can you say the word for me? Say that room that gets hot and, and Finns and others like to go and, and sweat in it. How do you say that word? The English language has one Finnish word in it. It's sauna. In general, in general conversation, I say sauna. I typically say sauna as well, but I would be curious to know what Lane would say about that. I kind of go right in between so I don't offend anybody. <laughs> Sauna feels fancy. Yeah, it feels too... Not too, but it just feels like I'm gonna go take a sauna. It feels yeah. fancy. Here's the thing. I don't ever see anybody changing how they say that by reprimand. I think about sauna like a lot of people think about good food, good wine, good beer. I think about it in terms of quality. I don't care how you say it, but we're going to introduce you to the real thing. We're going to introduce you to the authentic meal. And by the end of eating the meal, you're going to start asking what? What went into creating this? What makes a sauna? There's three key elements to me, which is stone, water, and wood. You got the wood to create the fire, to, to create the heat in the first place. Stone to become a, you know, a, a repository for that heat and to hold it in place, and then water to throw onto those rocks and create the steam. That's the sauna at that point. I see the wood-fired sauna so much so like you're making the meal yourself. A lot of wood-fired sauna people, they say a couple things. One, they say, I love the process of chopping wood, making kindling, of nurturing and fire, uh, getting the meal ready. The people who love the electric sound, it's sort of like, I want a high quality chef to make me a meal. I want to go, you know, let somebody who knows what they're doing make me a great meal and I'm going to go eat it and enjoy it. Um, not all chefs are created equal. Not all sauna stoves are created equal. I think part of the ingredients for good quality heat, part of it isn't just the heat source and the process. Part of it's actually that most good wood fired stoves hold a bunch more thermal mass. They hold more rock on top of them. If you find a good electric stove that can hold a lot of rock mass, it can produce a similar feeling and quality of heat without the prep time, without the experience like you might in a wood-fired stove. I prefer wood-burning saunas. Um, I just love the way they heat, the way they feel. There's an intensity to that heat that you can't have an electric one that has a governor on it. And so you can't control the heat. It gets to the point you can pour more water on the rocks and that elevates it, gives you the sensation that it's warmer, but it's just steam. But we live in the city. I mean, our neighbors are 15 feet away from us. And so if every day we were out using it and cranking up smoke and the smoke bothered people, gosh, that would just deter from the minute you go in and start the sauna that, geez, are, are, is it bothering them? And that's not why you have one. A lot of people will talk about the distinctions between electric saunas and wood fired in particular. And, you know, to me, all of those elemental things, and I'm a, I'm a hardcore wood fired sauna devotee, um, but all of these practices really require you to slow down and take your time. It's an escape. It's a place that you go and you, and you just relax. And uh, you heat, you, you, know, you, you burn out all the toxins from your day, baby. It's just, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. In the face of our digital world, that so much is intangible, so much is digitized, um, there are very few experiences that are authentic and analog, and we set our phones down, and the heat of the sound of forces that. What do you really appreciate about being in a sound? It, it really, I feel like it's number one, a break from everything that's going on because you're secluded and you're, it just takes you away from all the clutter. Very often our world is, I would say now, even before pandemic, full of stress and anxiety in ways that we probably hadn't seen before. Sound, it destroys stress. It destroys it. If you are having a bad week and you go in there and you endure 190 degrees, you know, Fahrenheit with three scoops of uh, water on the rocks and you go through that searing experience and the trivialities of life can't stand 
next to that. It's been a stressful year, to say the least. And so I would, I've would i watched the sound of market grow. I've watched new people become interested in it, not just families like yours and mine. That have been the cultural preservationists that have said, sound up, and here's why. Because we want the real thing. We want you to know the real thing, not the thing that's the lower quality version. That's what I've seen, and that's what's exciting right now is some of the, the people who are discovering it, who are finding out about it, who are starting to enjoy it, are folks who have never. And we get to introduce them to something really special. Walking into a 190 degree room is a bit of a daunting experience at first. I think the important thing to focus on is how you feel after that whole process is done. I've found nothing else in life that um, produces that, that sense of well-being and equilibrium, I think, is the term I often come to for it. There are so many months of the year here in Minnesota that are dark and cold. And so being able to go into anywhere that feels like you can sweat and you can breathe in warm air really just kind of, again, reinvigorates your body and reinvigorates all of those nerves and tendons that you have that you forgot about because it's freezing. Minnesota is just the, it's the cultural hub. It's the capital of sauna in the U.S. And we get to steward this gift that many families brought here 150 years ago. And you really do walk out feeling like the world's a different place. What's this feel like? Awesome. Perfect Thursday. Letting it all go. Yep. Here it goes. <laughs>